Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining me again this week. Here I am with Fernando, and of course my name is Sharon, and we are, are doing our second circle to follow up on the theme of scaly and slithering critters. And you may recall in our greeting circle, we talked about things like lizards, iguanas, snakes. Those are all scaly critters. Those all have those, those bony plates, tiny little bony plates that interlock and cover their skin. What's that? What's that, Fernando? You want me to show Lily again? I, yeah, I did. I did let her still wear her mermaid costume. Okay, so Fernando wants us once again just to remind you all of what scaly means to show little Lily in her mermaid costume. So remember we talked about this? These sequins are like little bony plates that cover her, her skin. And that's what scaly is. That's just like snakes, lizards, iguanas, and all those scaly little critters. And then Lily, of course, likes to flap her mermaid tail and she's going to dive deep down into the water and rest now for the, for the rest of our circle time. But she's listening very carefully, as you guys are at home, I'm sure, too. Okay, so that's scaly. And then we talked a little bit about um, slither. Do you remember that, Fernando? We did, yeah. So here is our word of the week, and that is slither. Right? And Slither, do you remember? We challenged you after greeting circle to try to move on your own, lying on the floor without using your hands or your feet. And that would be slithering. You're wiggling, you're squiggling, you're bumping up and down and back and forth and trying to get from point A to point B simply by moving your body in these rhythmic movements and that would be a slither. Right? Right, Fernando? You got it. Okay, we have a story to share with you, don't we, Fernando? So I am just going to put that card there and I am going to take the story and I'm going to switch places with you, Fernando, because it is quite a big storybook. Okay? Oh, excuse me. I had a sneeze sneak up on me. That happens sometimes, doesn't it, Fernando? I've heard you sneeze before, too. That's right. Okay, so let's have a look. This story is called The Lizards in the Window, and it is by Amelia Rivas. Let's, let's have a little look about what this story is all about. Okay, oh my goodness, it is a big story. I'm going to do my best and I hope you can see it. As we wait for dinner at the table each night, we see out our window a peculiar sight. Two thin, pink-bellied lizards appear from nowhere, completely aware we can see them there. Do you see those lizards? Can you see them? They've got pink bellies, and they seem to be looking at the family that's looking at them. The lizards look at us, and we look back. We know they are planning a bug attack. They move skillfully and stay very low, then wiggle their tails as if saying, hello. Can you see them? The mosquitoes soon appear on the scene. The lizards stay still so they won't be seen. They wait patiently as we look on. Then with two gulps, oh, the mosquitoes are gone. That was quick. Do you see that tongue? 
Do you see that lizard's tongue that's come? Those lizards, they're fast. A beetle crawls by but runs quickly away when he sees the lizards viewing him as prey. A moth flies by this dangerous spot, but seeing the hunters, she hides in a pot. Wow. Do you see her? Do you see the beetle? There's the beetle. Yeah, you got it. There she is. There's the moth. And look at those happy lizards. They're thinking, oh my goodness, dinner time. Okay, let's keep looking. This is interesting. While the bugs and lizards play a hide and seek game, we have fun watching and are quite entertained. Then mom serves our dinner, plates of hot steaming stew, along with rice and vegetables that are so good for you. Oh, that looks delicious. So the lizards are eating beetles and moths and mosquitoes while the people family has stew for dinner. Yum. The lizards keep munching until they get their fill. Their bellies grow larger after this very big meal. Those thin pink bellies no longer look the same. They've turned big and dark after the bug hunting game. Do you see that? Look at those bellies. Look at those bellies. They look tired from all the eating they've done. What do you think, Fernando? That's a lot of bugs. Fernando likes bugs too. The lizards began eating two mosquitoes as a treat. Then how many more bugs did those hungry lizards eat? Three spiders and four moths were a tasty blend. And eight little ants became dessert at the end. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of that's a lot of bugs. Do you see those eight eight ants there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight ants. We all finished dinner, each in our own way. For us it was time to leave the table and go and play. The lizards left with their tummies full for the night, disappearing as quickly as they had come into sight. Oh, that's a great story. That's a really fun story. What do you think of that, Fernando? That was a good story. So what were the lizards doing and what were the people doing? Were they doing the same thing? What do you think, Fernando? Yeah, they were having dinner. What do you think you would do if there was a plate of mosquitoes and moths and spiders and ants set for you at the dinner table? Do you think you would eat it? <laughs> no way. Not me. How about you, Fernando? Oh, yeah, that's okay. Frogs are allowed to eat bugs. That's no problem. But me, I don't think so. But they were all having dinner at the same time. They were just eating different things. That's kind of interesting. My favorite dinner is actually spaghetti. So maybe I'll make spaghetti for dinner tonight. Thinking about dinner time. Okay, Fernando, we've got some different photos to share with us. What's that? Yeah. You want to see some scaly ones. Well, that's what I've got here. So let's have a little look, okay? Can you hold it for me? Let's look at 
this photo here. Shows a snake wrapped around a branch, doesn't it? Is a snake a reptile? It is. It's a scaly reptile. It doesn't have arms. It doesn't have legs. It has scales and no fur. And remember what scaly means, those tiny little bony plates covering its entire body. That's its thin, that's its skin, that's right. And snakes, like lizards and, and other reptiles, have this in common. They're all scaly. They're like a protective coat of armor. It keeps other people from wanting to chomp at them or other animals from wanting to chomp at them. But it also protects them from rough or tough surfaces. They need to squiggle, they need to slither, so this armor helps protect them. Let's have a look at another one. This one is actually my favorite one. This is an iguana. And an iguana is a special kind of a lizard. It's a big, thick lizard and it's got a thick trunk. It's much larger. What can you tell me about this, this iguana? It has spiky spines down its back, right? Kind of like a mohawk. You see that? He's a big lizard. He reminds me a little bit of a dinosaur. Has a long tail, doesn't it? And it holds its head up and neck with its front legs and rests its back legs on the ground. That's true. Interesting. They can grow to be as long as me, six feet long. I'm not quite six feet, but you get the idea. And they have an eye on each side of their head and a third eye on top of their head. Oh my goodness. But this third eye is not like a normal eye, but it can help iguanas detect movement of a predator or a hungry animal sneaking up on it to chomp him. And can you see? Can you see all of its scales? Those are scaly critters. Okay, I think we've got one more photo here. Okay, here is a lizard. It's a smaller, regular kind of lizard. This one has bumpier skin, doesn't it? And it's almost the same color as the rocks. Do you see how it's clinging to the rocks? Should I hold it closer for you to have a closer look? As lizards grow, their scales do not grow. Isn't that interesting? When the scaly skin gets too small for its body, it flakes off. Just Have you ever heard of that with a snake? A snake's skin just sheds its skin. It's called molting. And that's so that a new set of scaly skin covers can, can start to grow over the, the snake or the lizard in this case, over their body that is growing. Okay. We have a bit of uh, activity to do today, don't we, Fernando? You know what, Fernando, I'm just going to pull out, pull out the start of our STEAM activity. And you know what, Fernando? I have my plate of critters just on the counter that I just need to run and grab. So Fernando, you sit here and I'm gonna grab those, okay? You ha hang on for one moment. And I've got them right over here. And we're gonna play a sorting game, okay? Are you ready? So Fernando, thank you so very much. Have a seat there. And you can see what we've got here. We've got three columns. We've got snakes, we've got lizards, and we've got iguanas. And rem remember, iguanas are a type of a 
big lizard, big, thick, chunky lizard, needs to use its front legs to hold its head up. Regular lizards are quite small, and then snakes, but they're all reptiles, right? And they all have scaly skin. So will you guys help me sort these? Let's have a look. Have a look. Yes, so that is an iguana. You can see big, big, thick trunk. So we're gonna put him right there. Let's have another one. How about this one? That's right, it's a lizard, isn't it? It's smaller, it's a little bit more nimble, it can move quickly, it's light and can kind of cling on to sides of things very easily. Oh, look at this beautiful critter. He's scaly, but he's got a thick trunk. He is an iguana. Okay, Fernando. You help me with the next one, okay? You come up here for a minute. I don't want to block the what I'm holding. Okay, how about we put it in front? There we go. Okay, Fernando. How about this one? What's that, Fernando? Yes. It's a small little lizard. You got it. All scaly, but all small. Guess this one. You got it. It's an iguana. Iguanas are those bigger lizards. Here we go. How about this one? He looks like he's another one of these, but he looks like a little bit thicker. He's definitely a lizard with scaly skin. Oh, oh my goodness. That is a snake. That's a snake, you, you're right. Oh, this one is a big one. Look at that one. Is it a snake? Yes. It is a snake. Whoa, snakes have all sorts of different colors, don't they? Can you picture snakes slithering through the grass? Not too long ago, I was in a place called Australia. And in Australia, there's lots of snakes there. And lots of people had to warn me to be careful of snakes. Make lots of noise when you're walking because they'll feel the vibrations and they'll slither away from you very quickly. Yes, that is a snake. All of our snakes were at the end here. Oh, oh, this one looks a little bit spooky to me. That is a snake, yes. Scaly, dry. Oh, and here's one last cute little guy. That is a lizard. There we go, we've done some sorting of our reptiles. Snakes, lizards, iguanas. Excellent, good job you guys. That was easy for you it seemed, wasn't it? But now we know all of these reptiles are scaly critters. We'll set that down and we'll learn some more about that in a little bit. Okay. So we have one last thing to share with the group, don't we? We do. Should I get it out? Okay. Let's get it out. I'm going to sit you down there, Mr. Fernando, and I'm going to get out this story called Kate the Chameleon. And I'm just gonna quickly wipe off the morning message that we did, just so we can use this whiteboard again and learn about chameleons. Okay, now chameleons are also a type of lizard. 
they're a lizard that actually can change color depending on their the space around them. It's their way of protecting themselves because they can camouflage themselves. They can hide in plain sight. Should we hear about this? Should we hear this magnet story? Kate the Chameleon, and it is by Pam Schiller. Kate is a beautiful ch chameleon. Her parents are very proud of her, not just because she's beautiful on the outside, but she is beautiful on the inside. Kind and caring with lots of friends because she really likes to take care and look out for the people around her. One day, Kate decided to visit her friend Sammy. Sammy was a blue spotted salamander. He's another kind of lizard who lived not too far away. The two friends had a great time catching up on, catching up with each other while they dined on fly pie. Yuck, fly pie. After lunch, the friends decided to try out a new game called hide and seek that Kate had learned at lizard school. Have you ever played hide and seek? Maybe that's a game that you could play later with a family member. Okay, so here is what happened with Kate and Sammy. Kate let Sammy hide first. She closed her eyes, counted to 10, and then began to look for her friend. Do you see where her friend is? Sammy was hiding under a nearby log with his blue spotted tail hanging out just enough to be noticed. Then it was Kate's turn to hide. So here's where the magic starts. This is, this is how we know a chameleon can hide in plain sight. So Kate hid in a pile of orange leaves. Sammy walked right past her. After a few minutes, she was tired of hiding in the leaves, so she jumped to a green lily pad. Again, Sammy walked right by her. Well, thought Kate, Sammy's not very good at this game. He didn't even notice her two times. Kate moved again. This time, she hid in a patch of red flowers. Do you see her hiding there? Sammy couldn't find her. She was thinking that maybe he needed glasses. Maybe something was wrong with his eyes. Oh my goodness. She decided to move to a really easy spot just to help out her friend Sammy. Do you see her there? So she hid in a bunch of yellow mushrooms. But again, Sammy walked by and didn't see her. Kate quietly whispered, Sammy, and then a little bit louder. Sammy, and then a little bit louder. Sammy, Sammy turned around and, and said suddenly, this is not a fair game. Why, asked Kate. You can hide anywhere and change your color to match the surroundings and then I just can't see you. Sammy's kind of right. Kate has an advantage. Her colors can change and she blends in with her environment. Oh, Sammy, said Kate, I'm so sorry. I never thought about how changing my colors would make it hard for you to see me. Kate reached over and gave Sammy a hug. But look at Kate's belly. What color is Kate turning? Yep, she's turning a little bit into Sammy's color, bluey purpley. That's right. And that's our magnet story. That was a great story. So that is called Kate the Chameleon. I like that story. 
Okay, Fernando, I think we are just about finished, but I know that we have one more song that we practiced, didn't we? Just a way of saying goodbye, but it's a special song. Okay, do you remember how it goes? Whisper in my ear. Okay, you ready? You just sung it. I got it. Okay. This is one that you can teach your family members too. Ready? Okay. Okay, Fernando, are you going to sing this time? Okay. Do you have green skin? Can you shed the skin you're in? Can you change your color to from green to red to blue? Do you live among the trees blending in with sticks and leaves? You're a chameleon. Good job. One more time. Do you have green skin? Can you change the skin you're in? Can you change your color to from green to red to blue? Do you live among the trees blending in with sticks and leaves? You're a chameleon. Good job. Okay, friends, so you learned the names of two different lizards. Iguanas are the big ones and chameleons are the ones that can change color. And you remember Sammy from the story? He's another kind of salamander, but they're all scaly, just like snakes. Okay, we're going to close out this week's circle time and we hope you enjoyed the activities and we are going to see you next time. And, and Fernando wanted to sing this song. Goodbye chameleons, goodbye. Goodbye chameleons, goodbye. Goodbye chameleons, goodbye chameleons, goodbye chameleons, goodbye, goodbye. Bye for now.